All right, here we go. Hello again, I am Blunty. Please do the things where you subscribe and bell and comment and stuff like that because it helps with the algorithm and the algorithm hates me and we all hate the algorithm so we must fight against it together as a team, right? Right, well, now that's out of the way. Nvidia have officially kicked off the marketing push for the next generation of their graphics cards. The RTX 3000 series is looming and Nvidia are about to make sure not a single one of you is unaware of that fact even for a nanosecond. I normally avoid covering much of the rumours and leaks around this stuff, but now we're on a ticking clock, literally, for some official stuff, it's time to allow myself to feel some excitement. This all starts with a tease on social media, what NVIDIA are branding, hashtag ultimate countdown. It has started a clock on a reveal of some kind. We, of course, don't know exactly what kind of reveal it will be or how it's going to be done, but it's safe to assume at this point, given we're seeing an ever-increasing amount of information leaks coming closer and closer together, it's usually a safe indication of how close we are to the new GPUs being officially revealed. That said, we should be damn close. The teaser includes the text, 21 days, 21 years. This apparently cryptic message is pretty clear to those of us who've been around long enough to actually remember it, but this timing lines up with August 31st, 1999, which just so happens to be, through no feat of mathematical coincidence, when GeForce 256 was released. Come the end of this month, it'll mark exactly 21 years ago since NVIDIA released the very first GPU to carry the GeForce branding. Now, it's not the first GPU... Not by a long shot. Not even the first NVIDIA GPU, as a matter of fact. Just the first one to carry the name GeForce. And before GeForce came cards like the Riva TNT2, which was, by the way, the GPU where my own personal PC gaming life started. In fact, I used my Riva TNT2 so aggressively, the thermal glue holding on the heatsink to the GPU's main chip melted, and with a startling clang, its heatsink smashed against the metal bottom of my PC case. That was a bad day. Fun story, though. Now, current rumours are holding that the next generation GeForce cards, the 30 series or 3000 series or whatever you want to refer to them as, are expected in early September, possibly on the 9th or maybe the 17th, according to some sources or wild guesses. And my guess about the countdown thing is NVIDIA will have a whole series of reveals and posts patting themselves on the back for the last 21 years of GeForce, taking us on a nostalgic tour of all the awesome things they've done along the way for PC gaming and the huge influence they've had and the many, many great GeForce cards they've had. But given the state of the world and shipping right now, I'd expect a more staggered, even kind of spurty release. <laughs> Sorry, spurty release. I wrote that in the script, and it's not until I said it out loud I realized how <clears throat> how weird that sounds. A spurty release, and then we'll usually see. And whether or not the whole 3000 series line will be pure RTX, where everything gets ray tracing from here on in, or we'll see another mixed generation where some cheaper options come without ray tracing cores and will still hold on to the GTX branding, we have no idea yet, but... I kind of want a pure RTX line. I want ray tracing to be the standard. Because until it is the standard, and of course both new consoles are coming with some form of ray tracing built into them, which will help, we won't see as much ray tracing as we should, in my opinion. What we do know, though, is it's been heavily rumoured we're about to see a huge bump in memory capacity. Going from the RTX 1000 series to the 2000 series saw a speed bump in memory, moving to faster RAM technology as a base, but average sizes remained pretty stable, 4, 6, 8 gigabyte being pretty much the standard in most popular consumer stuff at least on NVIDIA's side of the fence. With the 3000 series, it looks like we'll be bumping up as high as 20 and 24 gigabytes. Now, these sizes we've already seen on their professional level stuff, stuff for actual, you know, work and not marketed towards gamers, but with not only 4K gaming becoming ever more achievable and common for gamers, but with high frame rate 4K gaming being the next aspirational plateau for enthusiast level gamers to reach for, it does make a lot of sense to fatten up not only the memory capacity for all the textures we're going to need, but to make significant boosts of memory bandwidth as well. And of course, having a bunch of extra memory overhead will help with the ray tracing stuff. Alongside that change comes another, probably needed, but nonetheless more annoying change. Seems like we're in for a generational change to the PCIe power connector, moving from the long-standing standard of the 6 plus 2 pin PCIe Express power cables, of which many higher-end graphics cards need two of, 
This new 12-pin connector from NVIDIA has six 12-volt and six ground pins and is designed to handle significantly higher current loads than the current standard. And the 12-pin connector can be optionally split in the middle for two 6-pin connectors. So for, you know, the lower end cards, which don't need the whole big thing, I guess. And it also has a different pinout than the existing standards. And the connector, despite looking near identical to existing ones, is keyed differently. This is a good thing. It avoids dangerous mix-ups, like newbies trying to plug the wrong cable into the wrong hole. Giggity. One might expect some kind of adapter to be in the box with the GPU to make this transition a bit easier, and despite being designed with much higher current capability as we talked about, it's doubtful the new GPUs will need the maximum current capability that they're capable of. It's more of a future-proofing thing, I'd expect. So an adapter should do fine for those not ready to replace their whole damn power supply. Now, hopefully, most big brand manufacturers of PSUs who make modular designs will be able to release aftermarket modular cables that can plug into their existing power supply units. So that upgrade process is both a lot cheaper and a lot easier than buying a new PSU outright. And of course, will be much nicer looking and tidier than an in-box midline adapter will ever be. So, New, looming, exciting things happening. Some amazing changes expected and a couple of pissy little annoying changes we'll have to struggle through until it becomes the new normal. So life as usual now, I guess, if we're going to get all metaphorical about it. <laughs> Who's excited for the RTX 30 series? I am. I'm pretty damn excited about it. But in equal measure, I'm excited about what AMD are going to be doing because if the rumours of their stuff holds true as well, we're in for a hell of a generation fight. It's going to be fun. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty. Thank you, as always, to the patrons floating up above there. Thank you for everything you do to just, just, just throw an extra level of support for the channel here. I really do appreciate you. Big, big hearts and, and loves and well, maybe not hugs because I'm not much of a hugger, but you know. <laughs>